Good morning, good morning, and welcome back to Good Morning Tobago right here on Tobago Updates. Guys, as we continue our conversations this morning, we're talking about authorship and writing here on the island of Tobago. And this morning, we're having that conversation with Mr. Ken Gordon. Good morning, Mr. Gordon, and how are you this morning? I'm doing fine, thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you this morning, and thank you for bringing that great energy into the studio. Okay. So you have been writing for a while. Tell us a bit about when you started writing and about some of the publications that you have written. Okay, I started writing two years ago, and um, it's just about feelings, emotions that I've, I've had since I was a kid and decided to put, put them out on paper. And excellent, that's, excellent. That's so you just two years ago, I'm thinking that so during the pandemic, you just had the idea after, that yes. that you wanted yeah, just to after the, yeah, just after you the, wanted to start writing, and the inspiration for that had a lot to do with the life that you lived. lived. Uh, tell us about the actual publications that you have had since. Okay, the first is about physical abuse. My parents, I I was left with my father at 18 months, and he did all his problems and, 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 you know, all his taking all revenge from my mother leaving him or leaving me with him on me. Okay. And at one time I ran away from home. He found me, came me back home and he beat me. So I decided the next time I'm going to run away. I'm not staying in Tobago. So I did run away at 14. Started um, living in Trinidad by Ataria, 9th Street. And I begged on the street for nine months barefoot, one shirt, one pants. Okay, and how did you get out of that situation? Well, my mom lived in Trinidad. Okay. So my aunt, who knew I was in Trinidad, got a message to her and she came to Barataria and got me. And all of that is in the book? All of that's in, in the book. Is in that's an interesting the story. And, and the name of that book is called? The Shadow of Fear and Hunger. And you got an award for that. Tell us a bit about that yes. award. Yes, this, this camera. This, um, the, I took the, the book to the National Library and they had an award ceremony. They had 50, 55 of us, right? Five new ones from Tobago, new authors from Tobago. And I, um, I got received this award. Excellent. And are you self-published? Who is your publisher, actually? Oh, Miss Lady from Plymouth Road. She's Miss Util Duncan. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And how uh, are you in also encouraging other Tobagonians to of start course. writing? And what is the part to become a published author? <laughs> it's simple. I mean, everybody has a story. And I encourage in all my books, I encourage readers to at least tell their story. Like in, in, in this book, I said, um, Aljo, every Saturday morning you hear him say, by Calypso's, our stories are told. And I told him, Aljo, that isn't true. You have books to read, people's stories, and everybody have a different story, right? And so far, I've been having good um, representations with this one because of my lifestyle and people who know me, who knew me then and know me now, they see the difference. Right, so it's very inspirational also. Excellent. And with this latest publication, um, and it's called The Pillar of, of My Town, Town, it's important because one of the issues that we have here in Tobago is that there's a lack of recording of Tobago's history. Very much and so. you have used your publication to do that. Tell us a bit about what this book is really about and how it contributes to recording Tobago's history. Okay, the pillars, I use the pillars as the people I knew who helped to build Canaan Bonacore to what it is now, right? I have guys in this like John Grant. He started off as a taxi, <clears throat> as a taxi drive, driver and he ended up owning reef boats, ended up owning a restaurant, a nightclub, Golden Star, and he just moved upward from there and other people around that area, we have Harris Devines, he, he did um, blocks, culverts, um, cylinders, and so on, employed people in Canaan. You know, he had a guy named John Lacroix, he used to drive the truck. And I just sat down, remembered all these names and these people and their contributions to what we are today. We have First Citizens Bank, we have 
Republic Bank, we have Scotia, have a ATM, we have all these things in Canaan that weren't there before. Uh, Penny Savers, the Coliseum, the, 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 you know, Stumpy's Emporium. We have these places that people could shop without coming to Scarborough. Excellent. And have you done any interviews with their families or anything like that? No, not really. Most of them are dead. Right. <laughs> Most of them but are dead. to get an accurate uh, uh, depiction of their life, did you? What type of research would you? Well, have okay. Done? I use my own experiences. Right. For instance, when I played football, um, Issa George is one of the guys I remembered who used to help us fix our shoes. Um, sew up our balls and, and, and this sort of thing. So I just, um, you know, by b bringing back how the, the first gas station was, was built by a, a native Canaanite, um, Alan Horsford. We used to go there to pump our footballs because those days were tube inner tubes and so on. So I just remembered all the instances and experiences and I put them in the book. Excellent. And uh uh, any of your books available at the Scarborough Library, or are you in the process yes. of getting it? Yes, there. The Shadow and the one you have there. Right. Men, Men have, have feelings, feelings too. too. Those two are at the library right now, and they took a they took the first copy of this to review before they take the the others. Excellent. And the the National Library also have two copies of this at the at the heritage and that two copies of that one but not this one is here this is just this is me excellent and why do you think it's important for persons to go out and support this um new publication of uh the pillars of my town okay the pillars brings back memories a lot of memories i even rec um recorded some of the guys who represented trinidad and tobago in sports rebecca william Re Re rebecca rebecca roberts um, Linton Williams, uh, Desmond Melville, these are guys from Canaan Bonacord, Canaan Bonacord, who represented Trinidad and Tobago out there. And without my compilation or with, without my uh, putting it in my book, they would be dead in the next few years. Nobody would know. The people coming behind would not know who these people were. So I have them there. Then we have uh, Somerset Football Club, Starlight. We had Frank Wewell. Frank Worrell came here with a team and played our team from Canaan um, with, with representatives from Canaan who bowled Frank Worrell and they had, it's in my book, it's yeah. my story. It's really something that the youths coming up could aspire to. All right, you bowling a, 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 a cricketer, the caliber of Sir Frank Worrell, you know, that is something that we could take credit for. Excellent. And... What is your vision for these publications or this one particularly, The Pillar of My Town? Do you see it possibly getting into schools and uh, maybe even students around the Canaan Bonacore I would love for it to, it? you know, I would love for it to be incorporated in the school curriculum, really, because then a lot of these things, I would die, I would have died without these memories. Excellent. And even as the Tobago House of Assembly and the Division of Education <laughs> works towards a That's, Tobago that, Center. That, that is, I went to the Education sec Secretary to see the Secretary and it's the most wrong about I ever got. They sent me upstairs, downstairs, across the road at, at, at Pump Mill. It was, a, it was a joke. At Pump Mill or Dutch Fort? Well, Dutch Fort, sorry, yes. Okay. I <laughs> it was a big joke. I say, look, this is that this is nonsense. Okay, but this is something that uh, you usually work together with the library to accomplish. Yes, I would. Also. I would love to have um, some representative from the library after reading the book, seeing what they are about. If they could maybe pursue yeah. that avenue. Yes, and usually the library would probably recommend it to Eventually. the curriculum unit. Eventually. Or if you talk to someone from that unit and uh, maybe yeah, because possibly get them interested. Our experiences are, are so important. Yeah, excellent. All right? And without us or somebody from the past, I'm 76 years old. Without somebody from my generation coming out with something like this, I don't think every, a lot of stuff would be dead. Yeah. And youth. if you look at the type of books that the curriculum includes, a lot of it doesn't include Tobago-specific um, 
Yeah, uh, foreign his authors. History, yes. history or heroes. Yes. So uh, it is interesting. And uh, maybe you can reach out to the curriculum unit at the Division of Education. I'll try again. Directly. <laughs> Instead of trying to speak to a politician about it, it seems more like a curriculum issue. Yes, so yes. speaking to the right people about getting the book there may be interesting um, for the next generation. Yeah, I, I I'll try again. And you should. I'll try right? again, yes. Um, but talk to us about... Um, even the families of these persons, how is it going to impact them seeing the names of maybe their grandfather, their great-great-grandfather written here, and even some persons seeing names of their friends or yeah. just people who they remember in the community? Why was that important to put together a compilation for you? Well, okay, like I said, some of these, some of these experiences I have had would die with me. And before that happens, I took the initiative to... Um, I, I, I made it possible with some of the families that I know to, that I'm, I'm going to be using. I spoke to them pertaining to the inclusion of their relative in this book. And I've been getting good response since it came. I've been getting good response since the book came out. Right. And even with the current situation that we're seeing escalating hmm. on the island of Tobago something here, else. and you had your own personal experience of abuse. Do you think that there's a connection between that abuse that happens in the household and how young men come out and react and respond and get involved in criminal activities? Basically, the way I was brought up is completely different to today. My father, yes, he was, you know, serious. He was strict. But the energy that he would put into his family or the energy that parents would put into their families during my time of growing up, it's not there now. Most of the families are single parents and nobody in charge really of the kids. So it is expected that sooner or later, this is what we have in now would happen, right? But the thing is, I think that the police officers or the, 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 the arm of the police in Tobago, they have to adopt a different type of regiment, regimenting the community, the communities, the villages, be, be closer to the people to get information so that things wouldn't spread. And then we might have a breakthrough. Excellent. And what type of um, recommendations have you made in your small corner? in regards to combating crime in your district or in your area? It, well, we, we, um, Kenan Bonacord is sort of not, uh, considered to be a, a trouble area so far. So I could sleep comfortable at night in Kenan Bonacord. But for the other communities, I don't know if drugs is possible, is important, you know, is what is causing most of it or what, but basically if you look, at it right now, I think that is the reason for all the crime in Tobago right now. Right. I mean, you have a book called Men Have Feelings too. What type of recommendations do you have to young men in regards to how they choose their lifestyle and how they deal with their emotions as opposed to getting involved in drugs and crime and violence? Uh, that's a really, really good question. Um, basically, Women today question if men have feelings because of situations or things that happen in their, in their lives. Okay, and I am thinking that we have very few people, men have very few people to go to when they encounter, uh, uh, you know, problems in their relationships or in their lives. And this is what a guy would go through stuff who, that if he spoke to somebody about it, he might be able to get a little relief or he might be able to get something to work with. But like a guy recently, I think it was Dwight York's brother, he couldn't take what was happening in his life and he, he drank poison. Now, if he had spoken to somebody, give him a, some, you know, somebody mature, they give him a little heads up on what he was going through that, wouldn't happen. So I guess it's the, the avenues to which men could go 
for help is not available. Excellent. And guys, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back right after this. Welcome back. Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago. Guys, thank you for joining us this morning. We've been having some interesting conversations. This morning we started off our conversations with Restore Tobago. And as we wind up here this morning, we're still talking to Mr. Ken Gordon in regards to a number of the publications that he would have made as an author here in Tobago. Um, and as we wrap up, tell us um, why it's important for young persons to read as well as get involved in writing. It's, 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 reading is fundamental. Everyone should at least do a little reading. I didn't finish my education at Bishops. I went to Bishops and my headmaster was a fool. When I walked from Canaan to Mount Murray, seven and a quarter miles, he beat me. This is what stopped me from going to school. I never did exams, but reading helped because I love to travel. And when I sit down in the airport, have all those hours you have to wait on a flight, I always have a book with me because I've been to England, Canada, France, all these places, right? I lived in the US. So the thing is, reading helps to cultivate the mind. Without, there's no substitute for reading. No problem. Thank you so much. And again, in regards to encouraging Tobagonians to write their story and to publish their story, um, please encourage, encourage Tobagonians to do so. Yes, everybody has a story. And telling a story, it takes nothing from you. You're giving your experience um, to the, the community, the world for that matter. Because like I said, everybody has a story. And if you get... Make some time, and put it on paper. You yourself will, you, when you read it over, you get a certain amount of pride to know that you could help somebody going down a certain path with what they read from what you contribute. Excellent, excellent. And again, thank you so much for being here this morning, Mr. Gordon. Thank you for writing and sharing your story. And we wish you all the success with your new publication, The Pillars of My Tongue. Uh, again, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, um, thank you very much. No problem. No problem. 